yeah, getting right into this thing, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, what is this quantum sphere healing all about? Well, that's a great question because I know it can sound kind of elusive. What is the quantum sphere? So essentially what I'm doing in a healing session is I'm entering the quantum field to perform a healing for my clients. And so what I'm actually doing is I use sound technology to get in the gamma brainwave state and I enter this meditative state and I journey up into the fifth dimensional quantum sphere. So this is your personal universe within the quantum field. And this is where we found that the client's patterns can be most directly sourced and then cleared and repatterned. So um, when I'm in that space, I, I call in the client's higher self. That's who I work with. And I also call in mine. And so we found that these are the realms of the higher self, the fifth dimension and up. So by entering the space, that's who's uh, guiding the session. That's who I'm working with, just the client's higher self. So mm -hmm. you guys get to tell me, hey, is this pattern coming from a past life? Is this coming from birth trauma? Is it coming from the womb? Is it coming from um, an aspect of our energy that may be stuck? in some other dimension, then I need to go do a soul retrieval. So with that, because we're looking at such a higher realm, it makes sense to go into these higher dimensions to perform that higher, uh, that higher healing that we found, wow, people's patterns can shift. So like in my sessions, we can work in a variety of issues, whether it's like working on fear of the unknown or being seen, or even something like anxiety, for example. Well, when we're entering the quantum field, we are in the realm of just, we call it the everywhere and everyone in my work. So if this is infinite, um, infinity, if there's infinite possibilities and things to access, it makes the most sense to enter that space where we can get to the source of it. So that's why I call it the quantum sphere and I'm quantum sphere healer because essentially that's what I do. Past 10 years or so, um, a little bit over that, I've been just entering the field to perform these one-on-one -on -one remote healing sessions that I do for my clients. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty powerful stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> powerful. It, it's fun. It's just absolutely rewarding on my end because I get to see those shifts happen when we repattern. And I want to kind of clear that up when I say repattern, if I'm um, clearing something. So say we're clearing something like fear, um, I repattern it with the opposite. So that would be love. So that then when I'm cleaning, uh, doing some clearing, in their quantum sphere that gets cleared, it gets replaced with love. And then that's what the client's embodying in the third dimension. Mm. Now, you do something pretty interesting that I've never heard anybody say they do in their sessions. And that's mm -hmm. to tune to the gamma brain waves. Gamma, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel as though that is very pivotal to be able to enter this sphere? Yeah, absolutely. Because what's great about gamma is that it's total synchronization, uh, synchronization, excuse me, of the mind, of the heart. So when you're in that space, your your brainwave enters the space where, like, I'll even tell people um, to kind of bring it down for a minute to the third dimension. Say you're you're healing a brain injury or something. Listening to the gamma brainwave state is known to like repair DNA and provide like really deep brain healing, um, even support memory. So, I mean, I've basically been in the state for the last <laughs> 10 years when I'm performing these sessions, I'm in there like 90 minutes at a time. Uh, my memory just, you know, keeps getting like, I would just say better, sharper, or I can kind of like have connections form much faster. So when I'm in that state, not only does it help me journey up to that sphere much more quickly, because your brainwave can now access it knows, okay, I'm working with higher consciousness. So you're entering that state to perform the healing, but then you can do several things. So I'm not kind of just knocked out. I've got my, I'm, I'm wearing my headphones, but you know, I'm, I'm seeing what your higher self is showing me and I'm writing that down for you guys. So then I can report it back to you when the healing portion of the session's over. Well, when I'm writing, I'm not losing the connection <laughs> to, to that higher state. Close my eyes, you know, I'm okay, cool. I saw that past life. We're gonna, we cleared that trauma. And then you don't lose that connection at all. So that's why gamma is so helpful because you can do different things while in that state, you're holding that higher space, that higher frequency, but then you're still able to like um, function in the third dimension. So yeah. I found that like, it gets you to the space much quicker. I always recommend people, Hey, you're doing a meditation. Yeah. Listen to some gamma tracks and binaural mm -hmm. beats find um plenty of resources i always send my my clients different like links if they want to just be in that state 
listen to that music even while I'm working on them. But going there, it really gets you into that space. Um, it's just that realm of exploring. So if you want to listen to it yourself and call in your higher self and say, hey, I want to go on a journey. Show me what Sirius looks like or show me the Great Pyramids. You will see that. You will feel that in a different way. I'm a big fan of theta healing too. Um, I know a lot of theta healers do amazing work. And when you're in that beautiful theta state, um, you know, that twilight in between sleep zone, a mm. lot of energy work can be done in that space too. So sometimes the uh, frequencies for that are infused. I know in some like gamma tracks you might find online, but essentially going into gamma is how I can like quickly access that field to do the work in the time I have allotted for each session. And then um, once I turn off the music, I begin to kind of drift down back into the third dimension and there I'm back. So um, it really puts you in such a great place for meditation, energy work, but then you can bring it in to, to heal your brain or to improve your memory over time. Yeah. Yeah. I find that as well. I do the same thing mm -hmm. special frequencies and literal brainwave states put you into that frequency. It's like your body is an instrument that you can tune. And yeah. when you just simply play the music in your ears, it seems like um, you tune yourself to that different dimension, you could say. It's, um, yeah, very powerful. That's the key there. And that's something that I hope comes across, you know, to people in my work is that we, we forget we have this amnesia here and there's a lot of, you know, deprogramming right on the spiritual path. Then we awaken to the truth that we're beings of frequency and that's our true nature to work with that state, to empower ourselves, mm -hmm. and heal ourselves. So then we know, wait, if I'm attuned to this, I can access another dimension. I can go work with that higher dimensional energy and anchor it here that's only gonna you know support humanity in their own awakening and by that same nature we have lower frequencies on earth that yes. we might see if we're you know watching a show and we feel really bad afterwards well what do you think <laughs> is emitting yeah from that you know when you watch the news or whatever like what do you think you're getting hit with mm -hmm. so that's why i also like to really promote yeah listening to those higher frequency things uh sound baths tuning forks um you name it really getting familiar with what that feels like in your body i think is is just at this point essential to everyone yeah. on their journey mm -hmm. yeah. amen mm -hmm. yeah the important part about what you said too is that we have the lower frequencies so we're always being tuned the instrument yeah. of the body is always being tuned. So you just got to know how to tune it in the right way. And uh, I feel as though that is also intuitive, right? Would you say that when you start to go along this path, what is good for you and what isn't good for you in terms of frequency is um, there's some kind of resonance, like some kind of intuitive resonance or intuitive wisdom that just is apparent? Yeah. When you, you know, when you have a dilemma of like, should I do this or should I intake this or whatever the said energy is, like, do you feel as though you just know there's a sense of knowing? Yeah, I do think that I think we come in with that and then we forget and yeah. our journey begins to look like, how do I fine tune this little like, um, you know, tuner or nozzle, <laughs> Forgetting mm -hmm. the name, but you know what I'm saying? Yep. How do we fine tune it so that. We know what yes feels like in the body. No, we know what yeah. alignment feels like or doesn't. And, um, but that's like the great, I feel like rite of passage on the journey, you know, even after like a spiritual awakening where we go, oh, those things that once felt good to me don't anymore. They don't feel like they're in alignment. So I think that that's what we learn through like trusting ourselves and uh, those gut instincts. And oftentimes, you know, um, in my like capacity as an energy healer, people will come to me and say, you know, I kind of feel disconnected from my body or my feeling centers or my intuition. So maybe we, we get in there and we're, we're clearing trauma and we're resetting a lot of the fields so that we know, oh, okay, this is what feels good to me and doesn't because we can get a sense too, when we're bombarded. I mean, I know I can walk into a certain store and can like, you know, a lot of big box stores, um, where you go in there and you're like, I feel dizzy in here. Mm -hmm. like, after 10 minutes because mm -hmm. they're using some sort of radionics technology to scramble you. So you buy more stuff, but <laughs> we can be aware of these things, you know? So that's why it's like so key to go into something and know, Hey, this makes me feel really good. So, you know, when you listen to music too, um, you know, people have opinions about, Oh, what's, what's a high frequency vibe music. There's a lot of like 
things out there, but I think key with, with anything, when you're listening to something is, does this make me feel good? Or does this make me feel disconnected from myself, confused, Mm -hmm. Uh, angry in a way where you're like triggered, where it doesn't feel like it's a a catalyst to, because anger is such a productive you know, beautiful emotion where it's like, oh, this is charging me to want to take control of something. But it's more so like, what am I feeling? And what state is that putting me in? Because, you know, you can um, kind of sense that with conversations you have with people when you have those really like nourishing conversations that feel so good and you're talking oh, yeah. about things that you care about or higher frequency. Oh, you feel that in your body. So um, it's so important to get attuned to those feeling centers. And then we work with those frequencies. Cause I also think that, you know, a lot of people like, um, are, are, are super drawn to healing and energy work, which has been amazing. And I see people do it through, maybe they start up with like sound healing and understanding how something feels. And so like, I even know with like my pets and stuff, I'll put some like 528 Hertz music on and you'll see them be really calm. So you can really see that attunement in a lot Mm. of areas life. And to me, it's just fascinating. (laughs) I love experiencing it, but then, you know, seeing how it uh, shows up in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The -hmm. power of sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Now, how do you say we become aware of this intuitive guidance? Would you say it's just through meditative practices? You know, how do we tap into this in the first place? Yeah. I think that meditation is always going to get you there. Yeah. I think being able to get really still and in that space um, where you're in, when you're just, see, that's what I call kind of being like locked in or tapped into the fifth dimension. That moment you're just kind mm-hmm. of sitting with yourself. Maybe you haven't even started that meditation yet. Um, you just reach that point of gratitude and you feel that stillness and then you're already there. And then you can really feel what's yours. I have a practice I teach on retreats. I do at my live events. um, And then I have a video called expanding your core essence. And this is about getting into that place of gratitude and appreciation. So you kind of begin the practice with thinking about what you are grateful for. And then you breathe from your core essence, from your heart center. um, And you breathe and expand to like this, like bubble, almost like Taurus field Mm. energy forms around you. That's how I kind of coach people to begin their meditations. Then you get into that space and you go, Whoa, this is what I feel like. (laughs) Cause you're basically tapped into the infinite. I also tell people to, you know, call in their higher self and, and, you know, get information that way. But essentially those, that's like one of the best practices to kind of slow down, have that moment where you're just in that, that awareness. Um, and then you feel those things, you, uh, create those reference points. But I think, uh, probably the number one way that we we become more attuned is, is through healing ourselves. So it's through the way we get, um, we need to not be so numb, right? So the way we get out of that response or unfreeze is through the inner work, feeling our feelings. The more we feel that, the more intuitive we get. So whether it's shadow work, inner child work, which is a big part of my healing sessions, those are the things that make you more psychic, <laughs> more intuitive. Yeah. That's actually the way through. The, uh, we understand ourselves, we know ourselves, we, we heal that trauma, we integrate. And then we notice we're getting more messages. We become better channelers, better meditators, but we can hear ourselves. We can hear our inner voice. So I would say those are the ways, like you focus on that. You're going to become way more attuned to everything in this reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so simple in that way. Yeah. It's yeah. almost too simple. It just, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's almost like it can't be that easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why people doubt it, though, because it's that like it can't be that easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, maybe it's not easy, but it is simple. There's a slight difference in there. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, too, personally speaking, once you feel it, once you know, you know, once you tap into the higher self. Exactly. The fifth dimension, the angels, whatever you want to say, the higher guidance, it's realer than real yeah you know and uh from there i guess then once you know it's real you know that you can always approach the sanctuary within no matter what happens in one's life Mm -hmm. you know no matter what happens to you maybe for you whatever happens one can always approach it from that place of stillness and that's truly a miracle it is and i uh, i like what you said because you actually touched on the way i describe 
uh, working with the higher self. So some people, you know, they go, oh, you know, I'm, I'm in the quantum sphere. I'm in this expanded course in space. Like, how do I know? And first I say, well, you know, there's the truth of, you know, you know, but I like to think of when, what happened with me when I first connected with my higher self, I called it an ancient recognition a knowing Ooh, I was like, oh, that's good. It's oh, me. So I just got chills talking about it now. That's, that's how I felt it. And so, you know, the more, we're, like I said, attuned to our feeling centers, um, I think that'll become more apparent. But I also think that when you're making that connection, you don't actually need to worry about it because your higher self wants you to connect with it. <laughs> so mm. the higher realms and in, in essentially are like, Hey, remember us, like connect with us. So you will get that. And a piece of advice I give, uh, retreats when I'm, you know, teaching people kind of like more so the intro to energy work and techniques is really the heart of energy work. It's intention. It's visualization. Uh, it's breath work, it's breathing. So when you're calling that energy in, you know, you intend to call in higher self and meet with them. You're, you're breathing, you're just focused, you're expanded uh, and you, you trust the visuals that you're getting. That's another mm -hmm. tool that may help people. And even if you're someone who like, isn't, isn't visual, sometimes people tell me that when they're doing inner child work, I go, go with the feeling, go with, with your auditory, auditory response, you know, yeah. what your body's telling you. Um, it's a practice, you know, for some, but it's so available to us. And that's something that I'm, I'm just super like enthusiastic about is telling people and teaching them and hopefully activating that. Yeah, you can tap in this way, heal yourself this way, or, or get that information yourself or go on that journey of even just trusting what you're getting and letting mm -hmm. that guide you in a sense. Yeah. Faith, real yeah. faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this and let's go down this route. Yeah. When we tap into the higher self, mm -hmm. it seems to be a sort of different will that comes about, right? It's a different guidance that one may find when you act from the higher self rather than maybe a um, an egotistical standpoint, right? Yeah. So where does that will come from? And what do you say is maybe the... I was going to say the end goal. I don't know if there is an end goal per se, but where is this all going and why does this higher self want us to act out of that will rather than the ego, you know, from a collective standpoint, yeah. where are all of our higher selves taking us? Well, I think a big part of it is waking us up out of the movie, you know, mm -hmm. and that comes from the objective, almost observer space that, the higher levels let us allow us to have. So when we're, you know, here and we're in our everyday and our problems and we feel so powerless and we go more into like victim consciousness, higher self, you might manifest something in your life that says, whoa, you need to remember uh, who you are, not to disregard those pains and bypass them and say, yeah, everything is fine. We're all one on the highest level. I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah. Not at all. Um, there, but there is an aspect of like, when we're here and we're working through the 3d lessons that are here to get us to those higher dimensional states, it's a reminder that your higher self is here as a representative of source, reminding you that you are source. So eventually when we talk about higher themes about, um, lit embodying 5d consciousness and as a, as you know, humanity trying to evolve, or, or you could say ascend whatever word you want to use into those higher realms, it's kind of saying, okay, uh, what, what path of life are you on? So for example, I like with, with my work is essentially it's shamanic that has been, um, really, um, I would say, um, with the sound technology, it kind of turns it into a different realm. It's saying, okay, we're going higher. We're going into the quantum. But when we take what we know about the shamanic path, it's the awakening and eventually, going back into the infinite, right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's the goal, right? Getting that uh, for some people, right? Ha say it's, say your life goal is to leave the karmic cycle. Say you've, you've awakened to that's what you want. And then the shamanic path would say, okay, we, we heal and we um, attain enough escape velocity to, to ascend out of here and merge back with higher self to unite with higher self and, and live as higher self, maybe in a higher dimensional planet or wherever that's from. See, there's a lot of paths you can kind of take with describing yeah. this. But I think overall, what higher self is saying is you're here to evolve and grow. And here are the lessons. And if you lose sight of that, start working and connecting with the truth of who you are, 
to become that highest of all versions. So if it means you don't want to incarnate here anymore, you're done with that. You're ready yeah. for another star system or, <laughs> or the highest goal of just, you know, and whatever that's even going to look like, I'm not going to claim to it, but, you know, eventually just merging back with source consciousness and seeing how the multiverse is, is yet to expand. That's what higher self is going to take you on. It's going to take you on that journey, you know, yeah. and it's going to, um, embodying it. I don't, is, is definitely not easy. I think that that's the goal here. And so on the 3d level, it's going to look like really looking at ourselves, um, heal, healing, the wounding, healing, the trauma, seeing where the ego is hindering us and helping us and what needs to even get embodied. And then eventually it's like, okay, I want to merge with higher self. What would that look like? That would look like heart centered consciousness, mm. uh, having that higher perspective, but after going through the, you know, the lessons and the things here, that evolve the soul. I hope that answered that in any way. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, that was very well said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So the name of the game is evolution. Mm -hmm. It's trying to take us. We're saying it's like it's a separate thing. Yeah. It's really not. It's yeah. part of us. But I don't know how else to really talk about it. Yeah. This higher guidance, this higher wisdom is guiding the expression of the human being mm -hmm. toward evolution. And what does that evolution look like in the expression of the human being? What you're saying is just heart-centered living. Yeah. Right? Yeah, heart-centered living, consciousness, whether it's on a, a fifth-dimensional earth plane or I think, you know, our, see our higher selves. Like they, we don't necessarily know what the, what the plan is, right? They know what the plan is. They know what we want. <laughs> so whatever that looks like, wherever, um, I guess I would also say whatever, you know, source wants to experience through us. But essentially it's not what we're doing here. You know, it's not, um, mm. staying asleep. It's yeah. not sleep in ego and powerless mm -hmm. and letting the, 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 the powers that I can say the powers that were not the powers that be, but whatever powers, <laughs> that's another conversation, but yeah. like <laughs> have us here living, not as our potential, not in our optimal health and well being, but also not as, you know, um, what I think our, our, our nature is, which is, you know, awakened heart centered beings with, uh, psychic abilities and who can have a different experience that we're having now. So I think wherever each soul wants to evolve and maybe, you know, with each person and we don't know our, our soul contracts usually until, uh, we pass, you know, we have a sense with maybe individually what we're experiencing, but, um, if someone's got a, a you know, a contract or, or some, some sort of plan with their higher self that says, Hey, you're going to go incarnate here. Now, or you're going to do this. I think ultimately it is to just go back up higher. We've kind of descended here in the, in the third dimension, uh, to learn what we need to and evolve, or, um, people have different reasons for even coming here. Right. If we, we can, you know, go down the narrative of star seeds coming to awaken humanity, or maybe at some point you come here you get stuck in sleep or amnesia, Whatever it is, when we talk about spiritual evolution, we are talking about uniting back to to living as as that those heart centered beings in the higher realms who um, you know know their source. So it's basically leaving duality and you know leaving yeah. the realm of unconsciousness. But where else are you going to learn the big lessons, right? I think that going to get you here. I've always learned um, early on in my journey to to really see Earth as the school that you come to. That's mm -hmm. going evolve you the most that's the hardest place probably in the multiverse to come to <laughs> there's a lot of yeah. suffering here but um it's it's you know it's it's all part of that and i think that people learn that through their spiritual journeys whatever and you know whatever route they take whatever doctrine they're into we we have something in us even before we go through a, a major awakening that says there's something else mm -hmm. you know there's mm -hmm. something to this we have those moments where we're like, am I really just doing the same thing every day? What's this going to? That's why, you know, awakening is, is so powerful when we take that red pill, so to speak, and yeah. we learn. Um, we learn a lot. We learn about dark forces. We learn about things. But then there's the heart awakening and, and the awakening to, oh, wow, like there's a higher self. There's source consciousness. That's what we are. Let's evolve into a new experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gives one true purpose. Yeah. Like true purpose, greater than a bank account or yeah. your status or whatever else it is on the material plane. Like true purpose that is just, it 
feels good. I don't know how else to say it. Just tr it's ingrained in us. What did you call it before? Ancient. Oh, recognition. Ancient recognition. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, like, we can call it evolution. But Mm in that sense, ancient recognition, it's like we're not even evolving. We're just coming back home. It's just yeah. a, a remembrance, <laughs> right? Exactly. We're and remembering where we came from. Go ahead. I know you're going to say something. No, exactly. I was going to say we, I love that. We're remembering where we came from. We're going back home. And I just kind of see it as an adventure because, you know, oh, yeah, I, exactly. That maybe someone thinks that we all have to take the same path or we're doing it wrong. But when we realize the power of, of it could be really exciting. It could be exciting to know um, maybe you've got other incarnations somewhere else or more resonance with some other star system. Like this isn't just this like, this isn't this like sci-fi thing. It's so exciting to yeah. know that like there is so much more. We don't know everything, but maybe if we do know that we can trust the higher self, that mm. we can embody it, that we can learn about frequency and energy. Maybe we're going to get there a little bit faster than we think. Who knows? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In that way, simple again. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. in that faith, in that trusting, it's so simple. We don't have to know everything. We don't have to have it all figured out. I wouldn't want to have it all figured out, actually. Yeah. I revere the mystery, <laughs> yeah. right? Exactly. That's funny you say that because sometimes, um, you know, I have people ask me like, oh, you know, you, you have this tool and these gifts. You just like ask your higher self what's going to happen. I go, absolutely not. No, I don't. And that's probably why I have those tools mm. and get, yes, I can tap in when I need my guidance. And I do that through like energy updates, right. That I, I share on my YouTube channel, my audience, but like how excited to me, I, I think it's very exciting to focus on what's in front of us and, and engage with life that way and, and, and what it's showing us. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. it's all about. Mm -hmm. We can ascend, transcend, go to the fifth dimension, mm -hmm. tap into other star systems. A lot of different facets of our being we can tap into, but yeah. really you always got to come back down to the human form. Mm -hmm. I feel as though there is also a balance that one needs to take in this whole path. Absolutely. Because if you get too stuck in the trying to transcend, it almost becomes an escape, right? Yeah. You're trying to escape. So there has to be like that perfect it's the yin and yang. It's the balance between yes. both of the polarities of our being. And then, yeah, that's what it's all about is yeah. finding balance between that. We're somewhere between an animal and an angel. <laughs> <laughs> um, and an alien and we'll throw in a, a bunch of, yeah, yeah. for sure. And <laughs> something else that is like the, one of the, the main teachings I have in, in my sessions and, and, and it's grounding and it's like, mm. like to not, you know, trade up or kind of exchange like the power and the mystery of, of it all for some sort of like disassociative state. I tell people, you know, like, um, after doing this work, after even receiving any energy work, uh, one of the things I tell my clients is you got to ground yourself every day. First mm. of all, you have to be back in the body to experience this. These are space suits, right? But then grounding ourselves into physical form is how you imprint the energy healings that you do, the upgrades you receive activations actually into your DNA to make a difference. You've got to uh, we, we live in the body. So when you have those big moments in your meditations and it feels so good and so high, you've got to get back down here and ground it for a few reasons, not just to imprint the healing. So it sticks. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to fade away, but really it's about integration. And then yeah. when you're grounding yourself. So I teach this on my retreats, uh, my method of grounding where I've got our etheric grounding cord. I have a video of this on my YouTube channel, but you're, you know, you're dropping that into Gaia and all those upgrades and activations, but the healing you're doing I'm really focusing on that. The trauma you have processed and shifted that energy, you're grounding that into Gaia. Well, what's going to happen is the rest of humanity through frequency, through vibration yeah. is going to be able to tap into that and now know how to heal it. You've kind of broken through. Um, I don't know why the words escaping me now. I talk about this all the time, but there's the whole story about, um, the oh, in morphic resonance, right? The mm. first person who broke the four minute mile before no one knew yeah. ran a four minute mile after this person did this, people started doing that. So with that, if we take that concept, know that everything you're healing in yourself, your struggles, your hardships, or, um, think of this, your realizations. Now humanity has access to that. That's why we heal. And that's why we say too, obviously we're healing for ourselves and inner child, but you know, when people say you heal yourself, you heal the world. Well, that's exactly how 
<laughs> and, and grounding is a big part of it. I was going to say that. You read my mind. I was going to say <laughs> yeah. you save yourself to save the world. Wow. Hey, um, it's yeah. We're, we're synced just, up. Yeah, we're synced up. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What you said uh, was important about how your realization or a realization that you have because mm -hmm. you have it, that means it can reach everyone. Yeah. Yeah. We're all one mind in that way. I see us as different nodes or neurons in the one yeah. mind. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel yeah. that. And because yeah. there have been awakening beings in the past, many sages of the past, that only means eventually we're all going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're already there. But mm -hmm. actually realizing that we're there, I guess, or remembering that we're there without forgetting. Yeah. Absolutely. It's that remembering. And I think that's why, you know, so many people like awaken at different ages or, you know, different stages in life because they had to play human for that time to get yeah. those experiences. You know, if we know what's going to happen going into something, we're probably going to do that. We're not going to do it, right? We're like, no, I'm going to suffer for that long or it's going to mm. take this or that. Everyone has a different puzzle piece or or like you said, with that connection, right? To the one mind, that role to play. And so, you know, you have people who who incarnate, come into this life no veil, completely psychic, seeing it all. And then we get that information or you have people who go through a process of having to have other experiences and then that comes on. And that's, what's so beautiful is, you know, we, we are those sages from, from the future, you know, coming back here to awaken this part up. I mean, when we, we talk about the quantum, you know, and no time it's, it's such a trippy concept. It's funny. Cause in the, the, um, reference of like a healing session, you know, I'm clearing out past life trauma. I have you higher self version, tell me what to do. And we're, we're clearing all this stuff up to, um, things from this life. Usually I, I do a lot of work within the first 10 years of life. Cause I see that's, you know, there's a lot of trauma imprints there too. Yep. All that to say, all that's going into how we are now showing up for ourselves in the present moment, what we're transmuting and, and how we're helping other people. So, um, you know, with that, we, we have that guidance from higher self. Who's like, okay, eventually you're going to embody me and we're going to be one. So with, with that sense too, it's like, everyone has access to this. Right. Um, and you know, it might take a few different incarnations, but I think my point of this was bringing back to us all being sage and having that innate impulse in us. And there's the moment of, are we listening to this? Has this impulse been shut down? But I think what we're going to see, cause I see this a lot now I've been you know, doing my healing sessions for over 10 years now, but you see a lot more people sharing their knowledge, their truth, their information. Yeah. We're seeing that come up. And so that's why it, you know, it's just inevitable, but you know, with people who are awakened and light workers, we're kind of doing our part now to, um, sh you know, be way showers show that way now so that, um, we get to that part where <laughs> maybe it's a little bit more fun <laughs> through now, who a knows? little bit more fun. <laughs> I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. agree. That was a very productive point I made, but you get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, do you feel as though on the shamanic path, huh. when you get to a certain point in one's own realization that you do have to give back a little bit, even if you just talk about it, you know, you don't have to do sessions with anybody or start a podcast, but do you feel as though there is like some kind of compulsion in yourself and maybe in others that you've witnessed where you get to a certain point of healing within yourself and part of the shamanic path and part of the literal archetype of the shaman is to heal yourself and then you heal the village right so do you think that just comes along the way on the path yeah i think it's the beginning of the path because you don't i think that we can start off as you know i've always been someone who's like who's been there for like her friends and her family and identified as someone being, you know, like super empathic. But before I even was really aware of, of what to do with, if, with my gifts or abilities or have any like sense of training, it came, it showed up with, um, holding space, mm -hmm. being a kind person, helping people when they're down, but, That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, actually having the skill and, and, and performing like shamanic healings. Well, that happened because I, I got sick and I needed to heal. And so then I went through like the medical system, the Western medical system, which did absolutely nothing but make me worse. And then, you know, started looking into, uh, 
more Eastern modalities. And then it was shamanic healing that had helped me. And so then I had learned those tools. I continued to heal myself. I still work on myself. I do energy sessions on myself, but the, what started this me working with other people and healing them was having to absolutely heal myself first. Look at myself, look at my, look at my shadow, integrate that. And, you know, it's, and when I say that, I'm not saying this is like a past tense thing. If we're on earth, we're healing something, right? We're all, we're processing, we're looking at our wounding and, and, and we're doing that. And that's like I mentioned earlier with the morphic resonance, you know, that's, what's helping people, but, um, you're not, I don't know. Okay. I do know healers. I would say in the past that I've, I've known of work with who think they're all like, you know, have nothing to work on or heal. And what I think is like the people on this path who, who serve others, it, it starts with looking at you, looking at your wounding, healing yourself, um, creating those, um, or, you know, fine tuning those gifts and abilities and, and helping others that way. It, it always has to come, come from that. And so maybe even if I'm not, um, one day I'm like retired from one-on-one -on -one healing sessions, or I'm not doing like my YouTube videos or something, there is going to be some other way. I think I'll automatically be serving in some way. Um, not really don't necessarily know how, but I think that part of, of helping and light work can show up in, in so many other ways with, yeah. Um, the vibrational state when we're healing mm -hmm. ourselves and we're walking the earth as more conscious, higher vibrational healing uh, beings. I mean, that's also light work. That's your vibration. You're adding to the collective consciousness to uplift that. Hope I answered that question correctly. Yeah. Um, I kind of like, as, as I was talking, I was like, you know what though? That's the thing. It's like, I think once you're, you're on that path of service, it, it keeps showing up in other ways. It's really beautiful how it can be. Um, even you just being there for someone who's going through a difficult time, like that's going to change them. That's just adding more love into the planet. I think as long as you're aligned with love and it's expressing some way, you're serving in that way still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good point. It shines through in the smallest yeah. moments. You know, give money to a homeless guy or tip the barista, hold the door for somebody. Yeah. Just have a conversation with somebody. Ask them how they're doing. Exactly. That's where it really shines through. Yeah, that's absolutely light work. It's you have made a difference in someone's life for the better. You know yeah. what that is going to snowball into? Maybe you're the only person who's ever been nice to that person. That's yeah. going to change them. Yeah. Like that's, that's light work. And so um, I think my point too from earlier is like with, with the shamanic path, like people going through really difficult experiences too. Like that's what, you know, uh, creates a healer. I know that was that for myself. So the things that catalyze us, whatever, if it's illness, if it's some other form of trauma or suffering, overcoming that and learning how to do that, supporting people through that, maybe not even in the capacity of an energy healer, but being someone that someone you can, you can hold space for them and listen to their story and maybe even encourage them to share that. That's another massive way we shift the planet. Mm, amen. Yeah. Yeah. I feel as though, personally speaking, there's no other way than yeah. servitude. What uh -huh. else am I going to do here? Yeah. <laughs> Got to serve a little bit. And again, you don't have to start a podcast. You don't actually have to do anything specific. It can be in the smallest moments, like I said before. But you, you get to a point in these small moments with enough understanding. It's like, how can I not? How can I not, amidst the suffering of the world, the yeah. darkness of the world, how can I not shine just a little bit of light? You know, yeah. what else is there to do? <laughs> so, I mean, see, that's how we think, right? But then what can be scary is, well, people think, no, it's just amassing wealth mm -hmm. and and flexing in that way and acquiring yeah. more and numbing yourselves out to to the horrors of the world. Like yeah. a lot of people will, will choose that because it's too painful or they're so disconnected from, from themselves. But mm. then what's great is I know more people who are like you, who are like, how am I not going to serve? How am I not going to help? And that's, what's so beautiful. You know, that's the, the thing that that's where, that's where hope comes from, you know, yeah. like it's, it's, it's meeting the real people who go, maybe I'm not an energy healer. Maybe I don't have a podcast or whatever, but like, I have seen so many people, even if it's not through clients, like just do so much good 
And even if they're not, you know, awakened in some other realm. So for example, like maybe they don't have a certain like esoteric wisdom or knowledge about something in a certain field, but when you see their humanity, like that's what it's about. And I think that's to a path of embodying the higher self. It's like hmm. coming so heart centered, um, and awakening the heart and, and seeing other people as not, as not separate from us, not in a way where, you know, we're still not learning our lessons and having boundaries, but when we're awakening to that level and then we're changing ourselves to serve, that's, that's an, that's like one of the biggest elements to, I think, you know, this, this consciousness movement too. It's about, wow, like, look how I'm connected to everything and how can I add my light to this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's powerful stuff. I feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you say this though? Is the darkness in realizing the darkness is futile? You know, would you say materialism and all of it grant all of what it grants us in realizing the futility and that is actually what brings us to the light? You know what I'm getting at? Yeah. Like when you I invest too much into the world. Mm -hmm. it, it eventually brings us into this essence of there's got to be another way. I think so too. But I think that that is all important because we're in physicality. We're in the third dimension. So I, I'm not someone who's like, you know, going to just like completely shun all the cool things about being in the third dimension, you know, mm -hmm. like, and what I mean by that isn't necessarily material possession. What I mean is like, we engage with our life here. We are, we've incarnated here to experience a lot of things. So I think there's an aspect of that balance of, okay, I'm in physicality. I'm experiencing X, Y, and Z, but what's going to happen is exactly what you described the futility. And it, it happens at different points of life and, and moments where we go, is there soul behind this? What is this? Yeah. Oh, is there, we, as you know, we heal and stuff and we're, we're here for different reasons. Like it, and part of the evolution is what I'm getting at is that accumulating and, and expanding that soul essence. So then we go, this is not it. This doesn't feed it. Um, some people can do a lot of good with, with the money they have here. And, and I say this because money is just energy. We're not even talking about that. Yep. We're just talking about the, the aspect of like, we, we do certain things we think are going to make us happy. And when they don't, I think that's the moment too, where we realize, well, what else is there? And, um, what, what's my purpose? And we all go through that in different stages and in different ways. And then that's when we go, okay, um, I've had the 3d experiences that got me here, but what really matters is alignment is higher consciousness mm -hmm. it, love. And how do I move into that? So I think it's all the rite of passage that we go on kind of a, you know, that the roller coaster of those experiences, um, which, you know, gets us there in different ways, I think, by our relationship to it, because I've, you know, had people come to me before in healing sessions who are like, you know, I'm a CEO of this and I've got all these cars and I've got all this and I'm miserable and I'm heartbroken and I want to live with purpose. And then that's, that's their catalyst. And then for some people it's, it's something completely different. So it's, it's interesting to see, um, almost like the spectrum of how that shows up. Yeah. You mm -hmm. hit the nail on the head with purpose. We mentioned this earlier, but I think it's when one puts their purpose just yeah. into money or materialism, you're not going to find it there. <laughs> Despite what the world wants to tell you, there's no real inherent purpose that really means anything. Yeah. It's just an illusion of purpose. But this yeah. path, this wavelength we're talking about, as we mentioned before, is true purpose. It might sound corny and cliche, but it's real. It's true purpose yeah. for the, the human experience here. For That's sure. the big difference. You know, it's always those corny and cliche things that have the most. <laughs> always. Like, you know how many I say? Yeah, I know. All the time. It hits you on different levels. That's why I think like, you know, I think we have that big awakening moment, that profound one where we awaken to like, whoa, we're in a matrix. What's going on? But then there's the other awakenings, the ones where we awaken, we're constantly awakening into uh, different ideas of what purpose is right mm -hmm. or how we want to serve or our relationship to them it, it's always changing and like that's that's evolution obviously but it's so funny too and then as that happens i find myself coming back to those cliches and then they come but they mean something 
more profound each time. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 Would you say it always continues or it never ends? You said something like that, right? It was a uh, it's awakening. Yeah. Like the purpose. I feel as though my point is the purpose. It's never like you figure out the purpose. The yeah. miracle is that the purpose is never ending. You wake up every yeah. day. It's a new purpose. It's a continuous purpose that one finds, right? Yeah. If you do it in the material, it's like my purpose is a paycheck and that's it. And you have that. Mm -hmm. No, that's it's not because the beauty of it is it never ends. And it might even transcend this body, this temporary mm -hmm. vessel. That's the beauty of it, too, is this purpose transcends our life and our death. And uh, that's true for all of the sages. Like, think of the sages that got martyred, right? Mm -hmm. Like Jesus, all of his disciples, they realized that their purpose was way beyond their body, mm -hmm. right? That's their main message. I feel like that's the main message of all belief systems in their pure form is to find this purpose, find this state that isn't even quite a state. It's find this, um, this essence and surrender the ego and mm -hmm. you will have this eternal, infinite purpose that you never really truly find. <laughs> it's like a goal that you never really truly accomplish, but that's the good news. Yeah, it is the good news because we're trying to, you know, I think the third dimension mind wants to define it. And then when we go yeah. back to, you know, the sages and, and you know, different things that you said, like <laughs> religion, let's say in its pure form, it, what is that? It is the being in touch with the divine. Yeah. We're the divine. Um, and, and operating from that space. And what I love about it is I'm a big, well, I'm a Sagittarius. So my, my plan is Jupiter, which is of course all about expansion. And I've always seen, looked at life this way. Why can't a quantum healing modality do X, Y, and Z? Why can't we teach this? Why can't we do this? So to, I'm, I'm super focused on the whole concept of when we're working with the quantum field, like if we can think about something it's real. So purpose is always going to expand because the multiverse is always going to expand and we're a reflection of that. So that's what is, is truly sometimes exciting too, when you're looking at this path and you're like, what's the thing I need to do here? Like what I gotta, I gotta pick this career or I gotta do this. I love that. Everything's constantly changing all the time. <laughs> that's just part of me. Like mm -hmm. if something was staying the same, I would get so claustrophobic. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, even within my own modality, I've got a structure, but I'm like, what's something new I can learn to bring into this. And so I think expansion is like the big thing here too, that we're, that we're learning. And so that's why it's so important for us to engage in every emotion, every idea, everything that's coming from us is that call to expansion from higher self mm -hmm. you can show up in what you're passionate about, what, what inspires you. And, and it's ongoing and coming back to what you said, like, it's just so ever expanding. And so one thing I like to, to teach, you know, on retreats and, and things like that is like, well, how fun it is to engage with that, like to be that creator being and change something in your life and shift something and heal it and engage with life that way. Yeah. It's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's um, the hero's journey. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I said it in the beginning. It's an adventure. Truly. It is. It truly is. And I think when I was saying about, you know, getting caught up in the movie, I think higher self wakes us up out of it and goes, Hey, you're on the hero's journey now. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Get script. Yeah, exactly. You're going to need to trust yourself. You're going to need to learn some discernment here in the third mm -hmm. dimension, because you're going to need that in the higher realms too. Um, mm -hmm. We're here, we're going to sharpen ourselves and, and grow, but mostly open the heart and heal. Well, that's what I think anyway. <laughs> that's what I, I, I teach. But um, that, that seeing, I think seeing you get to a point when, it, when we talk about purpose or we talk about awakening, where we can kind of look at the universe like that in that, in that sense of awe, that really helps us work through the struggles that we do have in the third dimension too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not a, way of bypassing either you right. actually get to work yeah. through like you said you don't yeah. shoot away you truly exactly. do work through yeah you can't trick the universe you know <laughs> you can't like, trick yeah. god <laughs> like you're gonna yeah like you're gonna uh, bypass and pretend like you're healing something you're just gonna keep attracting the same issue you know mm -hmm. yeah i think you know and and people are in pain and suffering and trauma so it's, it's, there's there's i think sometimes an innocence to that where they you know they they think they're engaging or shifting but it's you know Part of it too is like the time you allow yourself to really look at something, how loving and patient you are 
with yourself. Um, the, I think there's a lot more people now, what I've noticed in just like the types of clients I attract, you know, people come into a session saying, I want to do shadow work. I want to do inner child work. I don't want to bypass something. And, and that's exactly what we do. So, um, it's real there, but like I said, like you can, you can try to bypass. You won't get really far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can try as Mm -hmm. you have eternity. You can try as long as you want. Exactly. You can (laughs) incarnate as many times as you want. You can. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. No, you can. Yeah. That's also the beauty of it is we have the free will to be able to ignore the higher self. Yeah. We do. Yeah. (laughs) You ignore the vine. For sure. I think we learn a lot of our lessons that way. There's been so many times in my journey where I go, Ooh, is this my gut? I don't know. Is this my thought? That that's part of like the process. And Mm -hmm. then you learn something. It's at a time. It may feel like a mistake. It's not, it's just you sharpening learning that discernment, but you're, we're always offered the opportunities to awaken. We really are. I think at this point, it might even be a conscious decision for people to say, no, I want to be unconscious. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's going to be pretty hard to stay unconscious at this point. We have all the tools. That's the thing we have. Exactly. We have so much at our disposal. Mm -hmm. Like the times that we are in truly, like what Mm -hmm. we're doing right now, is crazy we take it for granted because it's in our pockets we have this every day at all moments we have this technology but what we're doing right now we're recording it someone's gonna listen in the future that's magic that's truly magic we live in magical times there's no excuse not to tap in in this way and find this wavelength and incorporate it into one's life there's no excuse i agree it's we're in a healing um excuse me we're in an era of healing Mm -hmm. you can can tell because you know when I was doing these sessions 10 years ago I my practice definitely wasn't at, at where it is now the interest wasn't there and you know you had to demystify what a remote healing looks like you know and and now it's like this is part like you know you hear you can even watch something trust me this isn't my measure of anything but you can watch a popular tv show and have them talk about crystals and have them talk about reiki and like yes. you, you hear that it's part of the language now yeah so, someone's curious and not saying you have to do that. There's, there's things like hypnotherapy. There's all these other things out here. And if you can go on any social media app, now you can go on YouTube, um, just conversations you'll, you'll hear out in the world where there's so many resources for us to heal. And there's Mm -hmm. so many different practitioners. And that is so exciting that we can, that we live in that, in this time. Truly. Yeah. Miraculous times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Miraculous times. Thanks to people like you, Susan. Oh, well, thank you. And you too. I mean, <laughs> you offer this, this podcast and people can go in and, and see the interviews and find who they resonate with. Mm. That's what's great. Coming mm-hmm. back to that choice. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's what I try to provide. Find what you resonate with, who you resonate with. Yeah. And uh, just go with that, that mm-hmm. subtle resonance. Just follow that in all facets of life. Follow that and it will lead the way. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So it's real for all of us. That's the thing, too. It's the beauty. It's like no one is um, negated from this. We all have this at our disposal. We have the technology and we have the higher self at our disposal to guide us along the way and become the best version of ourselves. And what's this all about? To be happy. (laughs) To actually enjoy this experience, right? Contrary to popular belief. It's possible and it's real for all of us, truly. I agree. I, I know early on when I was learning with Shaman and she had told me that, you know, like life's supposed to be fun. And I could not understand that because I was like, I'm in pain. (laughs) I'm not doing well. I don't, you know, like things are hard. I, you know, there's when you awaken and you find out like the truth behind this reality and and power and all those things, but you get to that point though, you do. And it's, it's your attitude about it. I've learned in a lot of ways. Um, but I'm someone who, who knows I've gone through, you know, healing a lot of physical issues and, 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 and illness where we go, okay, there's, there's going to be a point though, where we engage where it's when we're healing, where it does become fun. And you get to that point of this adventure of like, there's a reason that I'm experiencing everything. And the, the universe is, is so massive. And there is so much love to experience here that you're going to get to the point where you're like, you know what, this is actually fun healing is fun. When I wasn't healing, that was not fun. You might have thought that was fun. Something was fun when you were asleep or unconscious, but I like to say that too, because I know 
you know, a lot of people, um, consuming spiritual content, you know, you usually find it because you're going through something really difficult. So I'm, I'm saying this with that energy and that perspective of like, you're not faking this attitude. Like, yep, this is great. Sitting in a burning house. Like that meme where the guy's like, yep, this is fine. No, what really happens is when you, you know, wake in the heart center and you're in awe with, with creation and the power you have, the free will you have, um, and what you can create here, you're going to get to that point where it's like, yeah, this is fun. I'm going to engage. I'm going to find the things that make me happy. Maybe I'm just sitting in my, in my meditation and, um, I notice the leaves. I notice, you know, a butterfly come before me. I, I know what that piece feels like. Those realizations can come in something as simple as that. It's not, um, it doesn't have to be this big external show of something, mm -hmm. but um, it's just about, you get, to, I think you get to the point where through all your struggles, you learn how to fall in love with life. And I think that that's, that's what it's about too. Well said. I think that's a good note to wrap it up at. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Let's fall in love with life. Fall in love with life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything else to say. I don't just keep it at that. Fall in love with life. I thank you for coming on here and sharing your time, effort, and wisdom with me and anyone that listens in the future. You are a special being. I feel it. Just keep doing your thing, please. And that's it. I wish you all the best. Thank you. I so appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you bringing me on here and just um, the opportunity to just share my light with your audience. So thank you. And thank you to anyone who's watching. Of course. And yeah, I'll put all your stuff down in the description for anyone that listened to this long. If they want to check you out. That's it. Peace and love. Peace, Peace and love. love. <laughs> See ya.